believe in accident. I believe in divine appointment. I was born into a devout Muslim home. And God had plans, wonderful plans. I've been there. On the day I was going to kill myself, Jesus revealed himself to me and he gave me a new life. And if you pray with me, and if you believe with me, God is going to give you a new life today. Jesus Christ is real. He changes life, he changes destiny, and he changes nations. And those nations can change the world. John 8, 34, Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if son sets you free, you are free indeed. Hallelujah. If son sets you free, you are free indeed. Jesus set me free. I was a daughter of a slave woman, Hagar. I was her daughter. Then on the day I received Christ, I was born of a free woman. I became a daughter of Sarah, the promised one, the real one. They will love substitutes, my friends. When you look around in the world, you can find substitutes of everything everywhere. You don't want sugar, you can find a sugar substitute. You don't want real milk, you can find a milk substitute. Everything almost, almost has a substitute. And one thing has many substitutes is God. They will want to come as an angel of light, angel of light, to deceive and devour many. So they can become a slave to hell one day, slave to darkness. This is what he is, his mission is. You need to understand how it works. John 10.10 10 says, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to steal your freedom. He wants to steal your joy. He wants to steal your peace. But the most important one, he wants to steal your eternal freedom. So you cannot spend eternity with true God. So he comes with substitutes. You need to understand those substitutes of God are not always ugly. Enemy doesn't come ugly. He doesn't come just as described in the movies or in the stories so scary. He comes alluring. He comes seductive. He comes beautiful. So he can deceive many. Bible says that he is like a roaring lion and goes around to devour many. And he's after your life. He's after your destiny. He's after your freedom. Then our freedom warrior comes, Jesus Christ, who shed his blood on the cross to set us free. He says, I pay the price. I am the real deal. I love you. My love, my love message is real for you because I don't only say I love you. I show you how much I love you. I die on the cross for you. It's not only with many words I only speak. I also act upon those words. Today, world is thirsty for love and many look for love in different places. Sex, one of them. They look in romanticism. But God says, I am. Great I am says, I love you unconditionally. I love you with all your filth, dirt, ugliness, shortcomings, mistakes. And he did the same thing to me. I remember my parents, when they were telling me about my mistakes, by age, if you know my testimony, by age 28, divorced two times, failed in every area of my life. 
an enemy was good at telling me about my mistakes, my filth. But Jesus said, I love you, Ushak. I love you unconditionally. Can you imagine the freedom that love can bring? Love liberates us. If you know that you are loved no matter whatever you do, how free you feel, feel and how free you will have joy. Maybe there are some of you here today. You need joy in your life. You are in depression. Maybe your husband left you. Maybe your boyfriend or girlfriend left you. And they were your entire world. They start finding faults in you, one after another. And they started disliking you. Those dislikes became falling out of love. Because people's love is conditional. But God says, you come to me. You just come to me with everything. What a freeing statement. You just come to me and I set you free. And if I set you free, you are free indeed. You are free. Every time uh, I give my testimony, I remember before I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior, I was so afraid about people finding my faults, my mistakes. I wanted to just always cover up, always camouflage my mistakes. I tried to look perfect. I tried to act perfect. And I always fail, of course, but I try to put masks. Maybe today you live with a mask. And God says it's time to be free. You see how many things he sets us free? It's time to take that mask off and be your real self. What a freedom. And I lived with those masks and I acted like I was perfect. I didn't want anybody to know about my faults, my mistakes, my shortcomings. This is the way world lives. And as Muslims in my former faith, we were always hiding. Hiding our sins, hiding our mistakes. But Bible says confess your sins to one another. Then you, God will heal you. you you can receive healing you can receive forgiveness there is a humility confessing your sins god sets you free from your pride when you confess your sins then after i came to the lord when he removed that mask and when he stripped me of all my junk all the substitutes in my life i started sharing my testimony like an open book all my mistakes all my failures and God started setting me free, setting me free. Every time I share my testimony, he set me free. In the book of Re Revelation, you can see the truth in this because he says they overcome him. Who is he? Devil. They overcome him by the blood of the lamb, by the word of their testimony. Every time I testify for Christ, every time I tell people who I was, he sets me more free each time. Each time I appear here and I proclaim his message, he sets me free. If today you are a believer and you wait to be perfect to serve God, let me tell you something, then you will never serve God. But when you, with all your imperfections, start serving him, he corrects you. He perfects you, he changes you, he sets you more free each time and each day. So there are many gods in the world and there are many substitutes of God. And they don't look bad. This is the tricky part. I heard someone said, a friend of mine said, Ushuk, God never use a bait to fish. The old times, Jesus' time fishing was with nets. Only devil fish with a bait. He puts something trickery to get you. Something that you are looking for. If you are hungry to something, he knows what you are hungry for. Love, feeling better, comfort, drugs. He keeps bringing the things that you are hungry for. He knows you. 
He's a good psychiatrist. He's a good psychologist. He knows everything, little things about you. And he presses your buttons to get what he wants to get out of you. Anger, adultery, bitterness, self-pity, all these things. But Bible says, John 8.32, you shall find the truth and the truth will set you free. You shall find the truth about yourself, confess it, and give your heart to Christ. How easy is it? it is. Most of the time in the Islamic world, we think that we have to work, 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 work our way to paradise. But we, don't, we are not even sure how much you work, you are not sure if that works can get you to the presence of the holy God. But God says, seek me, seek the true God, you will find me. Seek me. Seeking is, and then seek freedom. Seek it. Say, Lord, I want it. I don't know who you are. I was taught about you, but I want to find you. I am seeking you. Reveal yourself to me. I want to be free from lies. I want to be free from deception. I want to know if what I am believing is going to lead me to your presence at the end. What a good prayer is this. You need to ask him to reveal himself to you. And he will because I ask him. I, Bible says in Matthew 7, 7, ask, seek, knock. If you ask, you will receive the answer. If you seek, you will find. If you knock, the door will be open to you. This is his promise. Today, you want freedom? Ask. You want freedom? Seek. You want freedom? Knock at his door. I want to be set free from this bondage, Lord. Many of you are struggling with sin. Many of you are under the name religion, trying to survive. And you are miserable. Well, my friend, you will be miserable in this life. And you will be miserable in the life to come. You need to find God. You need God. So every religion offers something. People don't follow religions and their leaders for nothing. They offer something. Some amount of peace. Some amount of joy. Yes, you think all of them offer nothing and people... Follow them? No, they offer something. And they offer some truth. The worst lie is the lie that which has little truth in it. Devil takes that truth and fashions it with lies and serves it in a golden platter to deceive you and me. And others. But his name is Spirit of Truth. When he comes and he reigns in us, he changes us. Are you believing lies today? And those lies became faith in you? You are believing? God wants to set you free from those lies. While devil wants to whisper those lies into your ears. Let me tell you something. Dem demonic possession doesn't always come. People are fumes coming out of their mouths. They look ugly and screaming and running naked. And they have chains around their legs and hands and so on. Enemy of your soul. Over the time since you are born. Find circumstances. People. Lies, words to fashion in you a corrupt character. He works in so sneaky ways that makeup of your personality over the years changes and goes farther than the truth and righteousness that God expects from you. 
But the good news is Christ comes and touches you by faith. I believe before Christ, I grew up with a bunch of tons of lies in my life. I believed in lies. And when I look back, I say, I can't believe how I believed in those lies. Recently, I was in a study group, and in that study group at the college, this girl said, a believer, she said, I believe I am stupid. She said that. I believe, she said, I am stupid. She said, because I believe I am stupid, I try not to talk much because I will embarrass myself. I will look like a fool. This is what she said. I believe I am stupid and this is why I don't talk much. I became an introvert and I asked her, why you think that way? She said, well, when I was a little girl, when I was four or five years old, when I, whenever I made a mistake, my parents told me I was stupid. Later on, they stopped saying that, but whenever I made a mistake and I recognized that I made that mistake, I kept telling myself, I'm stupid. I'm stupid. I do this because I'm stupid. I do this because I'm an idiot. Lots of you, you speak to yourselves these false statements, lies. And she said those, and I told her, that became a faith in you. Word, speak, spoken word has a power. Faith comes through hearing, hearing the word of God. But I tell you today, faith comes through hearing, period. Watch what you hear. Watch what you say to yourself. Watch what others tell you and if you receive it or not. God has to set us free. When we are in Christ, forget being intelligent, he gives us mind of him. Imagine having mind of God. Mind of God. Recently I heard a story. This man was a political criminal in Siberia. They put him in prison with other po political criminals. Just like in my country, home country Turkey, there's no freedom of speech or think or belief. So even they may say there is, but you can be prison for what you believe or what you say in public. And that person, that man was, never went to a school, never really educated. He was put in a prison cell with hundreds of political criminals who were writers, lawyers, highly educated group of people just because of what they believed or what they said or what they write once upon a time. But this man felt so less than the others because they were very educated and that place in si Siberia was some, nothing you could imagine a prison, about in prison. It was filthy, dirty, you could feel the urine smells all over the place, people were hungry, they were not treated right. And one day somebody was taking the trash out, dirty, ugly, rusted metal container. This man saw a little paper hanging on that container. And he ran. For some reason, he wanted to get that one piece of paper to read it. This is, he, he could read it. He was a decent reader, but never further education he got. He ran and he grabbed the paper. It was John, Book of John, first chapter, two pages, front and back. He sat down. He read it, he read it, and read it. Before I go any further, I just want you to know, no one in that prison cell was a believer at that time. Whoever left a piece of a paper from the Bible passage was way before their time. 
So that man sat down. While other political criminals, smart people, intelligent people, they start just talking with each other with their philosophical thoughts and intellects from the books and everything. He would always distance and he could not associate with them or have a part with them. So that man sat down and they, he took, he held on to that uh, piece of paper and he read it, read it, read it every day. He read that every single day until a point he memorized two pages of the Bible. And then one day he sat down by himself and he said, God, the one that your name is in these papers, two pages, I give my heart to you. I wish I could have the rest of the book and I could read. He didn't even know what it was. But I believe what I read in this piece of paper. I will be here maybe the rest of my life. But I know that I know. If I give my heart to you, I will be free forever. I don't know how to pray. An atheist man never heard, of about, heard about God or believe in God. He said, I don't know about you. I never prayed in my life. But I am asking you, please, please come and change me. Immediately something happened. He felt the power of God. Jesus Christ revealed himself to him. And he knew at that moment that his life changed, his heart changed. He was filled with joy. He was filled with such peace and love in his heart. Following days, people just start seeing him. And Jesus appeared to him in his dreams and visions, spoke with him, took him to level after level of glory and taught him his ways. Because Holy Spirit was residing in him and showing him wonderful truths. After a while, entire prison start noticing the change in this man. They start asking him, how you can have such wisdom? We know you. We have been with you for seven years in this prison. You are an unschooled man. You know anything, you don't know anything about the philosophers of our age. You never had any proper education. How come you can have such wisdom? How come you can have such knowledge? And you know so much. He showed them those two pages of paper. He said, this changed my life. This changed my life. My friends, you want to be smart today? You want to be free from the chains of bondage, of devil, of words and lies? God says, I can make you smart. I can make you free. I can change your circumstances. Maybe you are a mother in, mother in the Middle East. Your husband died and you have five kids to feed. I heard recently one woman in Pakistan. People came and took her house that her husband left because she had nobody to protect her. They had no food to eat. In front of her children, they beat her up and they raped her and left her like that, like piece of trash or nothing. And she wrote me recently that she, after seeing some in her friend's house, some of the things that we posted on Facebook, she said that she had hope. She had hope that no matter what she was going through, she could be at least free in her heart. 
and she called Jesus that day that she wrote us because we were writing with her back and forth and she surrendered her life to Jesus. And she started writing. She has nothing, nothing. If I say nothing, believe me, she, this woman has nothing. Not, every day she has to pray for the next day for God to provide for her children. But she had such joy in her heart, such peace in her heart that no man, no philosopher, no writer, no president, no, nobody can ever give to her, no husband. I remember I was chained to a lie that I could not live my life without a man. Man had to tell me what to wear, what to eat, what to do with my life. I needed, I was such a clingy woman. <laughs> if you just met me 13, 14 years ago, you, you wouldn't recognize me. A woman that man is beating her up, kicking her on the floor and spitting at her, me. And I am grabbing his ankles, begging him not to leave me. You want to talk about bondage? I know. You want to talk about chains? I know. I've been there. I've been in the worst prisons of life for 28 years of my life. Probably this is why God is telling me that he's a freedom warrior. God is giving me messages that he wants to set more people free. He's telling me, go set them free. Just as I set you free. How many of you want to be free today? You are thinking about the things that are chaining you down right now. Please think. What would it take to break down those chains? What would it take to set you free? Think. My friend, I have good news for you. If you invite Jesus Christ into your heart right now, if you call him and say, come, make my heart your home, he will set you free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hmm.